High Fleet Kraken was the second major Tyranid High Fleet to make its way into the Milky Way galaxy, instigating the events of the Second Tyrannic War. Kraken was the High Fleet responsible for the decimation of the Eldari craft world of Yandan, causing unspeakable ruin and loss to a race already teetering on the brink of extinction. Though this particular tendril of Kraken would eventually be destroyed by the Eldari, thanks in part to the timely arrival of a Corsair fleet led by Prince Iriel, Eandon would never fully recover from this invasion. In addition to the mass slaughter of Eandon, High Fleet Kraken was also responsible for the scouring of Sotha, the homeworld of the Scythes of the Emperor Space Marine chapter. While the Astartes fought bravely in an attempt to prevent the Tyranids consuming their world, the majority of the chapter would be destroyed. Only a fragment of the chapter's forces, as well as a minute portion of the world's population, would survive the carnage left in Kraken's wake, fleeing to the death world of Miral. However, Kraken would soon make its way to this lush world and consume it utterly leaving less than a single company of Astartes to once again flee and attempt to rebuild their chapter. Kraken would eventually make its way to the mining world of Devlin, where it would initially be held back by the world's orbital defence platforms, allowing time for the world's civilian population to make their escape. Over the course of several days, the defending Imperial forces upon Devlin which included a company of Astartes from the Lamentus chapter, would be subjected to a series of subterranean attacks by a Ravana bioform of unusual size, the Red Terror. When the last of the evacuation ships managed to leave the planet's surface, the Lamentus continued to stand against the Tyranids but would eventually be overrun. One of these evacuation ships would make its way to the world of Adri's Hope, making an automated landing upon the world. When the ship failed to respond to any communications, a security detail would investigate, finding the interior of the ship to be reminiscent of an abattoir, as every man, woman and child aboard the ship had been horrifically slaughtered. The Inquisition would suspect that a lapse in quarantine procedure allowed a Tyranid organism to make its way onto the ship, though no signs could be found of any creatures on board. Three weeks later, all contact with Adri's Hope was lost. So what type of Tyranid organism could have been responsible for such slaughter? Initially, it has been implied that the organism that made its way onto the transport vessel was none other than the Red Terror, due to this Ravana variant also making its first confirmed appearance upon the world of Devlin, emerging at the time when the world's population were undergoing their mass evacuation. What makes this seem unlikely is due to the sheer size of the Red Terror itself. The Red Terror has been described as varying in size, from being slightly larger than a typical Ravana to being the size of a Morlock. If the creature is indeed a unique organism, then the latter is probably a more accurate gauging of its size even though it is described as being a form of Ravana, as the March 2001 edition of White Dwarf magazine features a short story about the Red Terror detailing how it was able to swallow Guardsmen whole before regurgitating the still living soldiers into the digestion pools of a hive ship. As such, it seems highly unlikely that a creature the size of the Red Terror could have succeeded in making its way aboard and then escaping this refugee vessel unnoticed. While the Red Terror was known for its burrowing capabilities and could have quite feasibly bored its way into the side of the ship, such extensive damage would have surely been noticed by both the ship's crew as well as those who explored it after its landing. This would seem to indicate that the organism that made it aboard the transport was either much smaller, or at the very least, had some kind of stealth adaptation. As such, one of the more obvious candidates for the Butcher of Adri's Hope would be in fact 
a lictor. Lictors are creatures that are used as scouts and infiltrators by the high fleets, often arriving on a world weeks or even months in advance of the main swarm. Unlike most tyrannid organisms, lictors are not naturally highly aggressive, though they are still incredibly dangerous. Instead of charging headlong to slaughter anything within their path, like most tyrannid bioforms, lictors will stalk their prey in a manner evocative of a jungle cat, using stealth to track their prey's behaviour and movements before waiting for the right opportunity to strike. They can remain poised and waiting for the perfect chance to ambush their prey for several days, remaining as still and silent as statues before unleashing an explosive burst of violent slaughter. In addition, the lictor also sports chameleonic skin, which allows the creature to change the coloration and, even to a certain extent, the texture of its flesh in order to blend in with its surroundings. Because of how advanced the chromatophores within its flesh are, the lictor is effectively able to become invisible to the naked eye. This would make a lictor a far more likely candidate for sneaking on board a transport vessel. After slaughtering all on board, the lictor could have made use of its camouflage abilities to simply slip past the investigation team in order to make its way into the wilderness of Adri's Hope. Because of lictors being used as scout organisms, if a lictor managed to make its way to Adri's Hope, then it could have very well begun to emit a psychic beacon to High Fleet Kraken in order to alert it of a newly discovered rich source of biomatter. Since all contact with Adri's Hope was lost three weeks after the transport ship from Devlin made planets fall, then it is reasonable to assume that an organism such as a lictor had indeed become a stowaway aboard the vessel, before it then alerted its high fleet of the abundance of biological material upon the world, which in turn caused High Fleet Kraken to turn its attentions towards Adri's Hope and eventually consume all life upon it. This would also explain as to why all contact with Adri's Hope was lost, as thanks to the psychic white noise known as the shadow within the warp emitted by the Tyranids, this would render all astropathic communication to and from the world effectively useless, leaving the population of Adri's Hope unable to signal for aid against the Great Devourer. As of yet, it's unconfirmed if Adri's Hope has indeed been consumed by High Fleet Kraken, though it is certainly implied that the world's population has been wiped out, one way or another. The only other Tyranid organisms that could potentially make their way on board a transport vessel from Devlin would be something akin to a gaunt, such as a termagant or hormagaunt, or possibly even a gene stealer. Hormagaunts have been documented as being able to lay vast numbers of eggs, which can then grow to maturity and hatch into fully developed gaunts. If a gaunt had managed to make planets fall, then this mass spawning could have potentially taken the planetary defence force of Adri's Hope by surprise, slaughtering them before they could have a chance to signal for aid. While we do not know for certain what type of world Adri's Hope was classified as, if the transport vessels from Devlin were automatically programmed to return to Adri's Hope in case of an emergency, this would suggest that it could have been either a civilised world, industrial world, hive world or even a forge world. As such, it seems somewhat difficult to believe that a single hormagaunt could spawn enough offspring to wipe out all human life upon the world, though admittedly, it is not impossible. A gene stealer, however, is a different matter entirely. While not as stealthy to the same degree as a lictor, the gene stealer is still an infiltration organism that is capable of subjugating an entire world. Potentially, a gene stealer could hide within a forgotten corner of the ship until a member of the world's investigation team stumbled across its hiding place. The gene stealer could then infect this individual with its genetic material, who, now enthralled by the gene stealer, 
could have simply informed their colleagues that the ship is deserted. This in turn could allow the gene stealer to slip away unnoticed to begin establishing a gene stealer cult, with the gene stealer eventually evolving into the powerful creature known as a patriarch. As gene stealer cults over time begin to grow in size and strength, with their numbers being supplemented with successive generations of hybrids and humans under the collective sway of the brood known as Brood Brothers, the idea that Adri's hope fell to a gene stealer cult insurrection does, at first glance, also appear to be a highly plausible explanation. However, there is a problem with this hypothesis. Gene stealer cults generally take several decades to fully establish themselves to the extent necessary to begin an uprising in order to take over a world. As only three weeks had passed, the number of fully developed hybrid offspring needed to instigate such an insurgency would have been essentially non-existent, leaving the idea of a gene stealer cult being the source of Adri's hope going silent extremely unlikely. However, there is the possibility that as the cult began to establish itself, the world would be noticed by a tendril of High Fleet Kraken which would then begin moving towards it in order to consume the world. What type of creature do you think was the beast of Adri's hope? Leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.